Hello everyone and welcome to my latest video. Today I will be installing PFSense on the Sophos XG115 and as you can see from the screenshot here that I'm already having issues <laughs> with the password. Now I wanted to show you what the basic boot up of the Sophos is before I re-image re it and but I need to find the password first so I will do that and then we can get right into the video so as you can see we're running into some issues even getting the password reset so the idea is that you have to reset the password via a USB console cable and I have that plugged into my computer right now and I'm following the instructions here that says to set it to 38,400 data bits 8, 1, none and none etc. Um, and I am trying to use putty to get into it and I'm verifying the settings here and also down in here as well um, just to change that to and then resave it but it's not letting me in. Unfortunately, I was not able to get the password situation sorted out. I couldn't get the USB device to recognize properly. So instead, we're just gonna go into the bootloader and the system itself, as there is another way to reset the password. So this is Aptio Setup Utility. I hit the delete key to get in here. As you can see, it's a fairly standard-ish type of BIOS, American Megatrends. Um, it is UEFI compliant, but however, I won't be using that uh, mode as well. So just going through the BIOS settings here, I just want to check to make sure everything is going to be okay for PFSense, but also just the default settings. So if you're coming and wanted to see what the BIOS settings were, here they are. So under the main, you can see the main. Under advanced, we have NCT6776 Super I.O. configuration. And this would just be the serial port that I'm actually connecting to the computer. Okay. So that has to be on if you want to use the console or serial port on this device. Hardware monitor. So just a basic hardware monitor you might see in any BIOS. CPU serial port console re redirection. So having this on is important. Okay. CPU configuration. As you can see, this particular model has a 1.6 megahertz. I believe this is a Celeron processor to uh, dual core. Under CPU power management, we don't have to worry about that. But it does have virtualization, so you could use this as a virtual server as well. Uh, but it is currently turned off VT-D. So um, virtualization servers, most of them require VTD. Network stack configuration is disabled. We don't need to worry about that. And CSM compatibility support module configuration is currently enabled. Uh, gate A20, well, that's an old setting from back in the day. Don't have to worry about changing that and interrupt 19 trap response. So I wouldn't mess around with those settings under network. Um, yeah, so storage. Eventually we're going to set this probably to legacy, but I don't know yet. Under USB configuration, uh, USB legacy support. So that's for the keyboard and mouse so I can actually get into the BIOS. XHCI handoff, we can leave that enabled. And the 6040 port emulation. Now I believe this has to be either turned on or off for PFSense to be, for the bootloader to work. So we'll come back to that. Okay, and then under chipset, south cluster, so SATA drives, okay, so they're both enabled currently. And there's a ADATA, um, I guess it's MMC, drive in there at the moment. I haven't taken this apart yet. H or X HCI mode is enabled. Leave that on for now. High precision timer stuff that doesn't really matter. 
under security, okay, if you want to change the password, you're going to leave no password on there. And then you have the boot options. So it's good that it's already set to USB CD because I will be using a USB stick to install PFSense on this. And then, yeah. So as far as the bias setting goes, there's only one setting I think we have to change in here, but we'll get to that uh, later. My concern right now is getting past the password screen and resetting the password. Welcome to Grub. I also wanted to show you this screen. If you do have one of these and you want to update the firmware, I suppose you could do it this way. I do have the Ethernet cable already plugged in as well. Well, let's look at appliance information. So we have the XG115 XN03 with the loaded firmwares. Um, under troubleshoot, let's see what we have. Reset console password. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, you don't actually need the USB cable to reset this particular model, which is revision 3. Enable serial modem, memory test, and disk test, Ethernet card test. So we could do those. Let's run a memory test. Oh, this is very familiar. This is open source memory tester from back in the day. And by day, I mean 90s. And through the magic of editing, we'll just skip through to the end. Well, instead, through the magic of editing, I didn't feel like waiting around for 30 minutes for this thing to complete, so we're just going to cut it off here. So we can take a look at disk, disk test quickly. Checking for bad blocks. And under Ethernet card test. Now, actually, this is actually the SF loader, so this is a diagnostics mode of the device. Checking port 1, checking the Ethernet. I don't know exactly what it's doing, but it says it's checking. The test result is fail. Register test offline, interrupt loopback test offline, link test on. Oh, okay, it's checking each port. So yeah, none of the other ports are plugged in. Okay, what's under the advanced one? Sophos firewall. Oh, okay, this is a bare Linux terminal. Okay, let's exit out. Troubleshoot and reset the console password. This is what I really want. P console password reset the default. Okay, let's see if that's the case. Let's do a reboot. Welcome to Grub. Okay, let's see what happens. Password. Okay, is it admin? It is. Okay, so we got this thing reset. So let's take a look at some of the options here in this Sophos. So under network configuration, please try after some time system is initializing. Now, if you're asking me why I don't use this as my router firewall, it's because you need licensing for this to work properly. So. Apparently in 2019 or early 2020, um, these things changed their license agreement. I think some people are trying to get rid of them. What's under system configuration? Set password for user admin. Set system date. Set email, set email ID for system notification. Reset default web admin certificate. Reset secure string match key. Okay. Route configuration. Configure unicast routing. Configure multicast routing. VPN management. And we have interface configuration. Interface name, WAN. I'll have to blot out the net mask and gateway. And here's the LAN port, it's set up a static at the moment. Typical 192.168 address. All right, so we're going to do a reboot and boot into my ISO USB stick and see what happens. Saw something flicker on the screen. Looked like a Linux related. Okay, that was just a shutdown process. 
F7 for the boot menu. VT loading, good sign. I believe I have PF sets already on the stick from the last install I did. There we go, finally. All right, so PF sets 2.6, that should be good enough. And let's rock and roll, boot in normal mode. Now, according to a post on a Reddit forum, uh, it says here in the BIOS you have to disable port 60-40 emulation. It looks like it detected everything. Install. Let's continue with the default. Auto. Yeah, and everything looks good here. Mirror swap. I'm not going to change anything. Yes to Stripe because we have no other options that are we have one drive in here and we're going to install it to the A data and wipe out the existing operating system. So before you go ahead with this, make sure you want to do that. And if you want to keep an image of the Sophos software, there's no going back um, unless you can find some image somewhere in a place that's not so reputable. Are you sure? I do. ADA zero, which would be disk one. And, but in computer terms, obviously it's zero because everything starts in zero in the computer world. And again, through the magic of editing, we'll probably skip through some of this. The mouse actually works as well. Yeah, these Sophos devices are basically miniature computers with a four port network adapter attached to them. The installation now finished? No, I think we'll make them after we reboot. Installation being complete, would you like to reboot system? Yes. Let's see what happens. Take out the USB stick. Wait a sec. Oops, I didn't pull out the USB stick. Hold on. I ended up pulling out the USB for the keyboard and mouse. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, it decided wanted to boot from PFSense anyways, so good for it. It's pretty much how the other install on the other device uh, went. So maybe we don't have to make any changes in the BIOS after all with this revision 3. So maybe this only applies to revision 2. I mean, I suppose it is slightly slower than a regular computer, but... It is a firewall after all. You're not going to be gaming on the thing. Okay, well, it detected two of the ports. I believe they're all detected. And it booted up successfully. Can assign interfaces just for the sake of making sure they're working. Oh, yeah, they're all here. Zero, one, two, three. Okay, so let's set the IP address and see if we can get to the web interface. So let's try the default. Came up quickly. Oh, pfsense is the password. Okay, don't scream at me. Also, for those of you who have the revision two of this, apparently, according to the NetGate forum, the installer or the boot up process will hang at this section right here. And setting the hints in the bootloader as shown on the screen here will fix that all i did was you can just type in installing pfsense on sophos xg105 revision 2 and that will come up in the form all right so it actually timed out on me but when i hit reload the wizard popped up so i'm not sure that was a bug in pfsense or what that was all about but yeah seems to be working I think there are some patches yet for this version um, to make it stable. And there's a package for that. Seems to be working. We can go do, let's do a ping. We'll go. As you can see, well, 
blanked out, but yeah, it is pinging. So there you go. You have a working uh, PFSense. I'm not going to go over what PFSense does or how it's... I'm assuming you already know that, but yeah. So I recommend if you can find one of these for on the cheap, uh, makes a great firewall, great router, and uh, probably could make it into some other server as well, which I might be experimenting with here in the future. So thank you, everyone, for joining me for this video, and have yourself a wonderful day. <coughs> Oh, Mr. Duck has something to say. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about the teardown of the Sophos XG115. So you can see what's inside of it. First, I have to remove the power adapter. And then, as you can see, there are three screws here and two screws on each side, two screws on the front bottom, and two screws on the back bottom. And not to bore you to death, I'm going to speed up the footage here and we'll be back in a second. We're back and the screws are out. Now that it is open, you can see the memory module, which I'm not going to upgrade at this time. You can also see the eMMC storage, M.2. You will see some of the chips. There is also one lattice chip, which says LCM X02-1200 UHC. And according to DigiKey, this chip is an FPGA, or if this, this is the networking chip. And from the website, you can also see the description and the voltage of this chip if you want to check it out yourself. All right, folks, that about does it for this video. I know I didn't show you the bottom side of the PCB. If you want to see that, I will put a comment in the comment section and then just upvote that comment and I will do a short video with the bottom side of the PCB. All right, so take care and thank you for listening and watching and uh, have a great one.